Welcome to a Hurricane Electric presentation on 32-bit autonomous system numbers. I'm your host, Owen DeLong. I'll be guiding you through this process. First, we'll talk about what is an autonomous system number, then who cares, what are the differences between 32 and 16-bit AS numbers, what's the big deal, do you have to do anything, when 32-bit ASNs will be issued, and when 16-bit ASNs will be deprecated. Then we'll get into some live examples. First, what is an autonomous system number? An autonomous system number is a unique number used to represent a collection of routes or prefixes with a common routing policy on the internet or any other IP network. They come in three principal flavors. Stub, which is what most businesses have. Uh, either they have one or more upstream providers to which they connect and receive either default or full tables, and they advertise their own routes. Multi-homed, which is an unusual kind of AS that doesn't occur too often, but there are some, where they may provide transit between a collection of autonomous systems that are somewhat related, um, but they don't provide full internet transit to uh, external organizations, uh, and they probably have upstream uh, autonomous systems that they receive full routes from. And finally, transit, which is what most internet service providers are, in that they have a full default free table, which they provide or advertise a default towards to their uh, downstream customers. Who cares? Well, uh, ISPs care because they need to do BGP to move routes around the internet, and sites that are multi-homed usually care because they also usually have to participate in BGP. Anybody else doing BGP for any reason, members of the Internet Engineering Task Force, and certain others. What's the difference between a 16 and 32-bit autonomous system number? Other than the obvious number of bits and corresponding numeric range, 16-bit autonomous system numbers are understood by all BGP4 speaking routers, while 32-bit AS numbers may require software or hardware upgrades to be fully supported. Most recent software does actually support them. Uh, don't worry, however, there is backwards compatibility for routers that are not up to full support yet. What's the big deal? Well, it's not really a big deal. There's no looming catastrophe. Uh, unless you have code or routers that need to be upgraded, it doesn't even really matter to you. And even if you do, it's pretty straightforward. However, runout will probably happen on 16-bit AS numbers before we run out of IPv4 space. Do you have to do anything? Well, again, that depends. If you don't own a router and you're not responsible for software maintenance on somebody's provisioning or account management systems, probably not. If you do fit into one of those categories, you don't need to panic yet, but I would pay attention to the rest of this. When will 32-bit AS numbers be issued? Well, first, all 16-bit AS numbers map directly into the 32-bit AS number space with leading zeros. Second, RIRs have already begun issuing 32-bit AS numbers to some uh, groups, mostly on a test basis, but there are some in production now. And finally, when we run out of 16-bit AS numbers, only 32-bit ASNs are left to be issued. At this point, RIRs are mostly making no distinction between 16 and 32-bit AS numbers, but are issuing in numeric order, so they won't be issuing 32-bit ASNs other than by special request until we run out of 16-bit AS numbers. Policies vary, however, so check with your local RIR for details. When will 16-bit AS numbers be deprecated? There's no plan to do so. They map directly into the 32-bit space and will continue to work as before, just with more zeros at the, at the front. However, we will run out of 16-bit AS numbers probably somewhere in 2010, so it is worth being ready for the 32-bit AS number transition. So how's this transition process going to work? Well, we've already got some 32-bit ASNs issued before all the routers fully support 32-bit AS numbers. So in order to accommodate that, 32-bit routers, when speaking to a 16-bit only router, will use this special AS 23456 to replace the 32-bit components in an AS path before handing that prefix off to the neighbor router. They will create a new community transitive attribute called new AS path, 
which will contain a copy of the original 32-bit AS path. Here's how this actually works. Let's say we're Autonomous System 6939 and we receive a route from AS1024020. We will actually process that just like normal because we're 32-bit capable and prepend our autonomous system. Then we get ready to hand it off to AS64496, but the router we're talking to there is 16-bit only. So we have a little bit more work to do. We will copy the existing AS path into new AS path and then replace the AS path with a copy that has 23456 placed in place of all the 32-bit only components. The 16-bit components are, com are preserved as is. 64496 will process the route as normal, ignoring new AS path and just passing it along untouched. The same happens at 64511, just like any other ordinary route. And in fact, much the same happens as the route is passed to 65551. However, since 65551 is a 32-bit capable autonomous system and router, the router will actually take the path components out of new AS path, restore them into the AS path, and you'll notice that the AS path now appears just as it would if no 16-bit routers were involved. This allows BGP to function as normal with 16-bit only routers, and still preserves loop detection and all of those other features you've come to know and love from BGP. This route can then be handed off to any other autonomous system as normal. Now let's see what this looks like on actual routers. First we'll log into a 16-bit only router. We'll telnet into the routeviews.oregon-ix.net route server. This is a public BGP route server. We log in as our views. Anybody can use this device to look at the global routing tables. And I happen to know that this prefix, 61.19/20, is originated by a 32-bit AS number. So we'll see what it looks like on a 16-bit only router. Notice the AS path underneath the words not advertised to any peer. Uh, is 6939 4651 23456. The 23456 indicates to us that there are 32 bit elements in that path, but we can't see them. Uh, in fact, there's one 32 bit element. Uh, you'd have multiple copies of 23456 if there was more than one. Now let's look at the same route from the perspective of a 32 bit router. Again, we'll tell that into a route server. Uh, this is the public route server at Hurricane Electric, route-server.he.net. And we'll look at the same prefix. So as you can see, the AS path there is 4651-131. 089. I'm putting some highlights next to it to make it easy to find in all that text. Um, so that's the original AS path with the 32-bit components present. That's what got replaced with 23456 on the other router. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation of 32-bit autonomous system numbers by Hurricane Electric. I'm your host, Owen DeLong, saying so long and happy routing. If you have any questions or comments, Feel free to contact me. The information is shown on the current slide. Thank you, and good luck.